All anyone seems to be talking about these days is whether Bitcoin is going up or down and whether we should be buying at the dip. But beyond its volatility, cryptocurrency is set to revolutionize the way we do banking in the 21st century. As more and more people move away from traditional ways of managing their money, a new type of financial system is emerging. Decentralized finance. To explain what this all means, here's Julian Haas. Decentralized finance takes the services or the functions that the traditional finance system has. So we're talking about lending money, exchanging money, and it takes those and it removes the centralized party. It removes the central bank or the government. And with that, it obviously changes the trust from having to trust an institution. And now you can trust blockchain. You can trust mathematics. Mathematical algorithms don't discriminate. That just means that it doesn't matter what's your background, what's your orientation, what's your age. And I feel that just levels the playing field. All you need is uh, internet access and a device. It allows anyone that's willing to learn to get access into this. At the heart of decentralized finance are these things called smart contracts. They're computer codes that automatically execute when predetermined conditions are met and they're stored on a blockchain-based platform. It benefits from the security, permanence, and immutability that blockchain offers. So instead of saying, you are transferring one Bitcoin to me, you would be saying, if you give me one Bitcoin, you automatically receive two Ether. So the inputs and outputs are kind of predefined. It's an if-then statement that automatically gets executed. It allows those people that participate to gain income from providing a service to the rest of the community. As trust is starting to shift from traditional banking to the blockchain, so are ways users can generate a passive income by providing a service in decentralized finance, which was once done through centralized banking. One example is liquidity mining. If normally you were to exchange one currency into another, you would go to a bank and the bank would provide this liquidity. In a blockchain, anyone can go and provide an exchange pair. The people who are providing this liquidity are getting a return on that. But like any other forms of investment, decentralized finance has its own risks. I think mainly for a user participating in decentralized finance, you have two risks. Um, the first one is a blockchain risk. It's an ecosystem risk. Are the smart contracts programmed the right way? Are there any consensus issues in the blockchain, in the ecosystem? This normally gets resolved over time. The older, the more sustainable, the, the more tested a blockchain ecosystem is, the fewer of those risks should be existing in that. But then when we talk about being hacked, companies need to have really good security checks to mitigate those risks as good as possible. And just make sure that funds are extremely secure, that the access points are really, really secure. Any kind of phishing is as difficult as possible. DeFi really provides access to the financial system that people normally don't have access at all. But it also helps people who already have access to the traditional system uh, by giving them, for example, extra income. There was this mother from Switzerland, actually, who is a single mother of three. And she said, look, during COVID, I couldn't run my bakery. She's self-employed. And she said, decentralized finance really got me through. I wouldn't know where else I would be had I not been able to kind of work in this ecosystem. This was so powerful, so impactful, and it was, it's these stories where I just feel this ecosystem is delivering so much value, and that's what I just enjoy, and that's what I'm so passionate about.